Welcome to Real Physics. This is a series of short clips about artificial intelligence and physics and today I'm talking about continuum mechanics. Why this? Because I very spontaneously, you see that I have not even my regular camera here, very spontaneously I visited the International Center for Mechanical Sciences in Udine in Italy. It's a wonderful place, a lovely atmosphere. I have been attending a conference on nonlinear continuum mechanics mechanics here in 2000 and back then I met one of the important figures of nonlinear continuum mechanics Hayes who collaborated with Rivlin and uh, Rivlin and Trustel is one of the classics one of the classical auto authors in the field so why do I mention this because nonlinear continuum mechanics is incredibly difficult it's one of the most difficult fields of physics at all. You might be familiar a little bit with linear elasticity, which is not easy, but confronted to nonlinear continuum mechanics, it's too really trivial. I give you an example. If you want to implement the condition of non compressibility into continuum mechanics in the classical linear approach, you have a displacement vector going transforming from the undisturbed to the disturbed state and then you simply consider the divergence it's a simple vector operation the divergence of that displacement vector and that if that vanishes you have no change in volume that is no compressibility if you go to nonlinear continuum mechanics that entirely changes you have to consider the deformation tensor and take then the determinant of that deformation tensor that tells you that the material is not compressible. This is just a little example, but things get incredibly weird and complicated and you, you have to distinguish deformations like oblate and prolate deformations, something you do not distinguish the linear elasticity and so on and so forth. So um, yeah, another example is just to, to determine the rotation of volume elements. This is important, for example, if you consider old ether theories like those of my Kulak in 1839. In linear elasticity, this would be just the curl of the deformation vector. In nonlinear elasticity, you have to extract the rotation matrix, which is a three dimensional submanifold of the, I don't know, nine dimensional, uh, you have of, of the entire. Uh, deformation matrix which has nine members so extracting that is called the polar decomposition an incredibly difficult operation you have not even a formula for so what I want to say is that mathematically this nonlinear continuum mechanics kind of explodes in difficulty and well where I do see possibilities for AI first of all the numerical treatment of course is greatly facilitated because you can do you can replace a lot of computer coding by artificial intelligence but not only i mean once large language models are capable of reading or understanding scientific text and we already have evidence this is the case so give them a volume of say true cell or rivlin which is almost unreadable at least for people like me i show you some of the pages here and i guess once a large language model is capable of understanding such text it will hugely advance theoretical understanding maybe even contribute to unsolved theoretical questions such as there has been an argument between rivlin and trustel whether the second law of thermodynamics is applicable to nonlinear continuum mechanics there is indeed no formal proof of this to this day. So I guess also we have a great potential in this field, continuum mechanics and in particular nonlinear continuum mechanics, which is really difficult stuff. And yeah, by the way, why all this is interesting because of course the ether is an interesting concept. The ether is something that could be used to explain electrodynamics, does not contradict special relativity and as I pointed out also in this paper it could do that a better understanding of nonlinear continuum mechanics will lead to an eventual 
deeper understanding of electric dynamics, which is also a linear theory now perfectly understood. So this also back then was my motivation to participate in, in that conference of nonlinear continuum mechanics to possibly understand electrodynamics by ether theories. It will not work in a very direct way, but yeah, maybe who knows. In any case, I have some hope that artificial intelligence will also eventually lead us to a deeper understanding. But if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. And if you are interested in fundamental physics, subscribe to this channel.